David. Welcome to Christ Church, UCC. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. If you didn't get a palm branch, raise your hand so that the ushers can give you one. Gary? And if you don't have a communion cup and you're wanting to take communion today, raise your hand as well so that Gary can get you a communion cup. Big Lee was ready. He was in the hallway and he ran. That's how special you all are. So for Thursday, remember services at 7 p.m along with Friday at 7 p.m. For Thursday, I need a volunteer to do some liturgy. You don't have to be a regular liturgist. So see me after church, because I need a volunteer. Um, it won't be our typical service lineup, as you can imagine, because you know, Pastor Gilbert doesn't like to throw any curveballs at you all or anything like that. No. So I will give you the liturgy ahead of time so you can uh, practice it. And in case you have any questions, you can ask me ahead of time. But I need one volunteer for Thursday. Um, for Easter, we're only having one service, which is at our usual time of 9.30. So keep that in mind. We won't have an earlier service. And birthdays for this week, we have Lori and Henry who celebrate on the same day, which is the 15th. So, round of applause for them. <laughs> and today we also celebrate the anniversary of those who made their confirmation in the different periods that are in your bulletin. So later in the service, I'll ask if any of those folks are here or a representative of their family, so we can recognize them. Um, those of you who volunteered to bring the bucket stuff, if you can have it here by the week after Easter, I believe it's the 24th, um, so that we can have that going. Through a blank. Uh, prayers for Alice. She will be having surgery on Tuesday. She, in, you see, in Spanish, we would say when someone falls, we say, meaning you want to buy property, and that's when you take a tumble, right? <laughs> because it equates to when some people, when like when you fall in the store, you sue, so you get money, right? And so somehow it correlates to that. But anyway, she took a tumble, as I had mentioned last Sunday, so she'll be having surgery on Tuesday. Uh, we also have uh, Bruce. Uh, who is at rehab, she's out of the hospital, and Hope, who is now in the hospital, um, she had two broken ribs, well, they found out she had a third one. So, she's in the hospital, um, so keep them in your prayers. Uh, Grace Hansen, everybody else listed in your bulletin, we have, unfortunately, we have a long list of folks listed in our bulletin for prayers, so please keep them in your prayers, uh, and I'll list them. You notice you have your branches already, so uh, we will be blessing the palms um, after our silent prayer. Don, good morning. I didn't see you there. <laughs> you were so quiet. <laughs> I was like, I need to be checking the liturgist was here. <laughs> Let us pray. Oh Lord, you wrote on. You rode over the cloaks and under the branches. You rode through the shouts and past the praises, receiving the praise that you deserved, but not confusing our praise in your presence for your purpose in coming. O oh Lord, you rode on. You rode towards the controversy and the cost. You rode towards the curses and the cross, receiving the stripes you didn't deserve to give us a reward we couldn't earn. O oh Lord, you rode on. You rode through the tomb and the grave, you rode through our time and space, ascending to a throne that will never decay, a priesthood that will never pass away, a life of love that will always remain, and hearing us even now as we pray. O oh Lord, you rode on. We remember the journey you have taken as we commit ourselves to walking in the same way. 
Give us the strength, hope, and joy we need as we follow. We pray in Jesus' name, the original advocate for social justice, as we enter into silent prayer with an embodied awareness of God's sacredness within us. Forget I did want to forget one enough. But if you're on the ONA or WISE committee, there'll be a meeting right after at 7:45. So I'll grab your copy or whatever you need. And where are we meeting? Library. I think there's another meeting in the lounge. Yeah. So. Just lift up your palms if you're able to do so. Almighty and loving God. It is indeed right to give you our thanks and praise for the act of love by which you have redeemed us through Christ Jesus our Savior. The Hebrews acclaimed Jesus as the Messiah and King with palm branches in their hands, crying, Hosanna in the highest. We pray you, O Lord, bless these branches and make them holy. May we also carry them forth from this place and crying out, Hosanna in the highest. And blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Acclaim Jesus as our Messiah and King, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Amen. Who comes this way? They say he is the Christ. That means Messiah. That means you. The king. The king. Who comes this way? Is it really him? I want him to beat the Romans and save us from poverty and hunger. Is he victorious? Is he powerful? Is he scary? Where is he from? Greece? Rome? Jerusalem? Littleton? They say he comes from Bethlehem and grew up in Nazareth and Galilee. Nazareth? Nothing good can come from there. Who comes this way? Who is he? Why are we cheering him on? Is he good or bad? He must be rich to get such praise. Stop waving the branch in my face. Move away. Let me see around this parade. Put me on your shoulders. I need a higher glimpse of him. I just want to see his face, and then I will know who he is. Let me see. Wait. Wait. It is only a man. And he is just on a donkey, no conquering steed. It is only a man. What is so great about him? Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna means save us, and we pray. But who is this man that will save us? Who comes this way?
Let us join together in the prayer of reconciliation. Sustainer of the weary, we know how we sang for joy when Christ came into our lives, and how we have not followed him as he leads us on this journey. We have hidden our faces from the pain and suffering of our world. We have turned a deaf ear to the cries of the poor, the hungry, the oppressed. We trust in the slick promotion of the world, and not in your words that can transform our lives. Forgive us, steadfast God, and shine your face upon us. Help us to have the same mind as Christ, so we would know your promises. Help us to have the same heart as Christ, so we might serve your children. Help us to have the same spirit as Christ, so we, so we might go wherever you lead us. And now listen to the assurance of grace. God does not turn away when we fail to be faithful. God does not reject us when we do not trust fully. God continues to love us to forgive us, to restore us. It is God who helps us. It is God who saves us. It is all we need or ever will need. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now if you'll be to stand in body or spirit and share the sign of peace by waving to each other. Praise the Lord for answering my prayers and saving me. 
The stone that the builders tossed aside has now become the most important stone. The Lord has done this and it is amazing to us. This day belongs to the Lord. Let's celebrate and be glad. We will ask the Lord to save us. We'll sincerely ask the Lord to let us win. God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise you from here in the house of the Lord. The Lord is our God and he has given us life. Start the celebration. March with palm branches all the way to the altar. The Lord is my God. I will praise him and tell him how thankful I am. Tell the Lord how thankful you are because he is kind and always merciful. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please stand in body or spirit for our gospel reading according to the book of Luke, chapter 19, verses 28 through 40. When Jesus had finished saying all this, he went on toward Jerusalem. As he was getting near Bethpage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples on ahead, and he told them, Go into the next village where you will find a young donkey that has never been ridden. Untie the donkey and bring him here. If anyone asks why you're doing that, just say, the Lord needs it. They went off and found everything just as Jesus had said. And while they were untying the donkey, its owners asked, why are you doing that? They answered, the Lord needs it. And they led the donkey to Jesus. They put some of their clothes on its back and helped Jesus get on. And as he rode along, the people spread clothes on the road in front of him. When Jesus was starting down the Mount of Olives, this large crowd of disciples were happy and praised God because of all the miracles they had seen. They shouted, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory to God. Some Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, make your disciples stop shouting. But Jesus answered, If they keep quiet, these stones will start shouting. Here ends our gospel lesson. Let us not place a period where God has placed a comma, for God is still speaking. Please be seated. Today's gospel reading has <clears throat> a lot going on, as usual most of our scripture does. But we have a man that is not fully recognized by everybody as being the Lord and Savior, the Messiah. We have those who are still questioning if he's truly who he says he is. We also have <clears throat> a man who is humble, saying, yes, he is the king of the world, he is the king of God's people, Yet, he is not going into Jerusalem in, on a chariot. He's riding on a donkey. And when we look at that and how humble he is, we need to envision ourselves at that moment. Who would you be? Would you be one of those questioning who he is, who he claims to be? Would you be one of the supporters and start carrying out what he has demonstrated? And if we bring ourselves into the present, do you humble yourself? When you're placed in a certain situation, do you exceed your privilege and your power? Or do you humble yourself? See, for me, I know that when I'm working with the congregation, whether it's this one or previous ones, you all have seen me, I'm very hands on. Because I'm just one of you. And just like Jesus humbled himself to do hands on, that's what we're called to do as clergy. And we know, historically, that's not always the case. There are some pastors that's like, nope, 
I'm the pastor, you do it. And Kyle knows it too well, along with Riley, that I'm very hands on during the week. And it's not that I don't trust the staff to do what they do, it's because I have to contribute to bring the whole together. Yes, there's times where Kyle, I tell him, this is what I need you to do, Kyle. And he does it. But then there's times like Holy Week, where I'm like, Kyle, these are what I would prefer for you to use. And it makes it a little easier on, on his load. But at the same time, I'm contributing to the whole vision of what we want. <clears throat> for example, Holly, as you know, traditionally takes care of getting the branches for us. And one of her questions was, what do you want me to do with them? I said, well, we're going to distribute them before the service because we're going to do something different. And then just decorate how you would the altar. She asked me, what about the communion table? To me, in my head, the altar would be the whole section. But to the average person, it's not, right? So I was like, yeah, the communion table is here. See, she did her part. She could have said, well, I'm the one who takes care of it every year. I'm going to set it up whichever way I want. She did it. She was part of the team. And she asked, what is it that you're envisioning? And that's what we have to do. When Jesus was riding into Jerusalem, he wasn't like, this is the way it's going to be. He got threats. We know this. The Pharisees warned him. And yet he was like, yeah, I know. He kept on. See, how many times has Jerusalem been in your sight? Think about it. <clears throat> we always go back to Jerusalem. And this week, we observe once again the journey that Jesus took. Those last few days as a human being. Because we know that he took our form to be able to further relate to us to walk in our shoes, to feel our pain and anguish, our sadness, our happiness. Because yes, we read the scripture, but I don't really read in there where it's like, oh, and Jesus was just rolling on the floor laughing. But I'm sure he had those moments. And so, picture like some congregations did this morning. I know Nevin said several congregations got together and one of them brought a donkey. So they were gonna have a parade around one of the parks. If you went to my previous home church, uh, first congregation in Evanston, there's a park right across the street. I like to call it the Bermuda Triangle of Churches because there's like four congregations around that park. Well, they were gonna get together and have a parade with a donkey symbolizes. Yet, when we look most of the time at the donkey outside of this context, what do we say? The donkey is stubborn. And the donkey is slow. So let's think about that for a moment. Stubborn and slow. But value, because Jesus valued that donkey so much, that's what he used to ride into Jerusalem. And so why am I pointing out those two words? Because the church, like this one sometimes, not putting me down, okay? We can be stubborn. No? If you disagree, don't throw anything at me. But we can be stubborn, right? We're set in our ways a lot of times. But at the same time, you're of value in your input. Think about it. The donkey kind of became a secondary character. Why do we talk about so much about the donkey? We could just say, Jesus wrote in. Right? It's up to you when he wrote in. 
So we point out the donkey. On top of that, the owners of the donkey didn't question why the disciples were taking it. So why is that? Well, just like our suburbans, but we have, we have faith, we have hope, we are valued, we trust that Jesus is going to do the right thing by us. And it's going to stick with us. And the owners of that donkey believed that and said, okay. And it's like, well, who is this guy? He's the Messiah. Oh, okay. And how many times in this society do we speak about doing what Jesus would do, loving each other, treating each other with kindness, accepting each other for who we are, yet only some when it's convenient for them? How does that work? Jesus didn't accept people just when it was convenient for Jesus. They didn't go up and say, hey, I, didn't, uh, I love you today, but tomorrow maybe, I don't know, I'll think about it. No. If I Eileen came up to Jesus and said, um, I don't really get what you're saying, and I don't know if I agree with what you're saying, but she still stuck around. Jesus said, like, oh, well, I don't like you anymore, just go away. <laughs> no. Jesus was like, okay. As we've read several times in Scripture, let's dialogue. And at the end of the day, if she chooses not to understand, or not so much understand, but agree with it, that's okay. Jesus didn't say, oh, well, never mind, you didn't agree. No. See, Jesus demonstrates through Scripture that we should allow the dialogue that everybody who comes to the table, to this table that does not belong to a single one of you, belongs to all of you, should have a say-so. Just like Thanksgiving, most families come together and you have dialogue. Sometimes the dialogue goes well. Sometimes it doesn't. And so think about that. When the dialogue has not gone so well, trauma is created to where then people start avoiding this table. Right? We see this every Sunday, aside from the pandemic. There's less and less people filling our pews. And not just Christ Church, but the church universal. Why is that? Because the church universal has created an unwelcoming space around that table that they avoided at all costs. And this coming week is when we should humble ourselves and if we haven't done before, kind of try to put ourselves in somebody else's shoes. And think, what would this be like if I was X, or this, or that? If you're male, what would life be if I was female? Would I be dismissed at the table? Would I have been asked to sit around the table first because I'm a man, and the woman should be serving me? Now, I don't agree with that, so don't throw any shoes at me. But imagine, we still have cultures today that that's what they practice. The men sit down and eat after the women have, most of the time, been the ones in the kitchen, cooking the large meals, and instead of being the first ones to eat it, they're one of the last ones. And that should also gear us towards this week, where women are the ones who go and discover that the tomb is empty. And they are dismissed. It's like, really? Are you sure? 
Are you sure you went to the right place? And that still happens in today's society. So how do we begin to open the door to pull out the chair and invite those who have not felt welcome? How do we do that? Now, there's no one chemical solution or diagram that's going to give us the solution to it. Why? Because there's so many of us that have a gene, that have something invested around this table that all of us will want to have our voice heard. But if we're all yelling on top of each other, are you really listening to each other? So how do we become less of the loud voice around the table and become more humble and let others speak? Or maybe encourage those that we have traditionally seen be rather quiet. Now there are several of you in this sanctuary that are not very quiet. And you express yourself, say, hey, pastor this, pastor that, and I hear you. But then some of you, I'm like, Eileen, how are you today? Good. But how are you really today? Good. And I'm not saying she does this, just FYI. <laughs> but how do we do that? When I talk with Eileen, I ask her, hey, how's this going, how's that? She'll share as much as she's comfortable sharing. See, as I've told you before, all of you are valued children of God. And as your pastor, I can only do so much, as much as you let me. If you have that white picket fence around your property and you have the gate with a lock, and you're like, hey, pastor, can't get to know you any further than that. Now, I'm not saying first visit, oh, come right in, let's sit down, let's have coffee. Well, I don't drink coffee, but you get what I'm saying. But you can say, okay, let's sit out here in the porch or in the yard. And we have conversation. That's what this table is about, is you coming to the table. And if there's someone new saying, hey, pull up a chair. How many of you didn't grow up saying there's enough to go around? If someone were to drop in, you may be numb. I know I was raised that way. I know many of you, if not all of you, were raised the same way. That even if you didn't have much, you're gonna split it up into just a little bit smaller so you can share with us. That's what this is about. It does not belong to just one person or one set of people. Jesus didn't just die for those people over 2,000 years ago. Jesus died for all of us, even in today's society. So, as we travel into this final week of Lent, if you haven't done so during this Lentil period, Really reflect on what it is that Jesus is asking of you. What is Jesus asking of Christ's church? You have done a tremendous amount of work because, in case you forgot, this church has been in existence for 130 years this year. Bark Dog reminds me almost every Sunday. <laughs> so, Obviously, you've done something right. You're still here. And there's more than five of you, or 12 of you. I read a headline in a bit of the story in New York where a Presbyterian church of 12 had to sell the building, 
without a pastor. Twelve. Evanston, we had a congregation, UCC, who closed not too long ago because they dwindled in numbers and resources. You, Christ Church UCC, are wealthy, aside from the obvious that we know of. But you treat each other like family, like friends. You treat each other as a community. And that comes a very, very long way. Because when people walk in through our doors, and as I told Gary last week, eventually I want to start opening those front doors, at least at the beginning of our service and at the end, so that people know we're here. And even if you all don't use them, that's okay. But people will see them open in hopes that they'll walk in and know they are welcome. You have welcomed me. We didn't know each other. We're obviously not identical in culture or ethnicity. You've shared your space with two other congregations for over a year now. You've made a lot of strides to open this community to a bigger community. That is what Jesus has called us to do. And there will be challenging times. There will be obstacles. But just like Jesus had hoped that he would reach those people in Jerusalem that day, Jesus still has hope for us that we will continue to reach people beyond these four walls. That we too will ride on the donkeys instead of Mercedes or Lexus or whatever the most expensive car is right now. Obviously most of them are because of the pandemic. <laughs> or like some clergy, we won't fly in on a jet. I haven't asked you for a jet. That's my next proposal to council. <laughs> and it's not for you all to take your vacations. It's just for me to fly from one side of Chicago to the other. <laughs> no, that's nonsense. If Jesus was walking here with us physically right now, Jesus wouldn't be taking a private jet. And I bet you that even if someone said, no, 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 really, you know, you don't have to pay anything, we'll give it to you. What do you think he'd do? No, nope. I'm just going to fly coach with everybody else. That's what we need to think about. Yes, those comforts, those privileges we have are wonderful. Right? They keep us vital. They keep us going. We love our comfort space. We love everything we have because we work hard for it. But that doesn't mean we always have to show it on our sleeves. We can humble ourselves. Most of you have invested throughout your life. Some of you are more comfortable in retirement than others. But from where I stand literally right now, I don't see a single difference between you all. And some of you have shared your story with me, and I just tossed that part out when it comes to the dollar figure, because I really don't want to know. But I know what you've invested. And I have a clue of what financially you're worth but I'm not gonna treat you any better than the person who has way less or who saved only enough to measure their potential expenditures during retirement. So as we continue in this week of Lent, let us remember that Jesus humbled himself tremendously, rode in on a donkey, 
which I'm sure was in beta before he wrote on it. And we had, just like today, how you were waving your branches. There were so many who did believe in him, believed in his message. And there are still so many today that do believe in that, but need someone to help them. As we read today's liturgy, put them up on your shoulders and let them see over the crowd and see what all the fuss is about. Because I can assure you that when we get to our eternal home, God is not going to ask you how much are you willing to pay me to get in. God is going to ask you, what did you do for your fellow child of God to earn entry here? That is what matters. Amen. created and is creating, who has come in the true man Jesus to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by his spirit. We trust him. He calls us to be his church, to celebrate his presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God.
north and south, from east and west, to feast at the heavenly banquet of the Lord. Christ the Paschal Lamb has been sacrificed, therefore let us celebrate the feast. Christ invites us to this table, all who desire to follow in faith in the days that lie ahead, and to acclaim him, Lord, let us come to the table in faith. Join me in the liturgy for communion that is printed in your bulletin. Let us open the gates of our hearts. That the Father of God may come in our Let us lift our voices in praise and thanksgiving. God deserves all honor and blessing. It is our privilege to enjoy you who is all the Lord in every place and every moment. And so, dear God, we offer you our worship through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes to us humbly and riding on a donkey's power. The Lord Jesus, on the eve of his death, shared a meal with his followers. Taking the bread, he gave thanks, broke it, offered it to them with these words. This is my body, 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 body for you. you. Remember, Remember me whenever you eat. After taking the cup of wine, he gave thanks and offered it to them with these words. This is my body poured out for you. Remember me. And so, now, O oh Lord, we eat and drink in memory of Jesus and his great love. And in this simple meal, we proclaim his death and resurrection, given life to all people. The body of Christ. the second part. I'm listening for your little rappers. The life blood of Christ. The cup of blessing. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thank you, O Christ, for this feast of life. We are fed by your love. We are strengthened by your life. We are sent forth into this world to live into the visions God has laid out upon our hearts. We are now commissioned to feed as we have been fed, forgive as we have been forgiven, love as we have been loved. Thanks be to God. Amen. Are there any folks that are here in recognition of their confirmation? or any family members of? So we've got 275 and 150 anniversaries in the house. Let's give them a round of applause. Those are pure gold, just by the way. And I just checked the meeting can be in the lounge because I don't think we have one of those meetings. Let us pray. You are on your way to Jerusalem, precious Lord. You are on your way to suffering and to death for the sake of our freedom and our salvation, this mystery and wonder. Our hearts overflow with, into songs of praise. 
Hosanna, we cry with the crowds, blessed are you who comes in God's name. Yet you puzzle us, you puzzle us with your suffering love that is more powerful than our brokenness. You puzzle us with your freely chosen humility that brings blessing in our weary places. You puzzle us with your forgiveness that summons us beyond the hurt. Liberating Savior, you make us comfortable, you make us uncomfortable, so that you can lead us into more life and deeper wonder, so that God can take who we are and break us open, and bless us and give us the, to the world. Grant us grace to welcome this holy restlessness, that we may live by the power of your Spirit, and in your name, in the name of Jesus Christ, the source of the living covenant, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for us. Amen. Remember that although we don't pass the physical collection plate, it's back in the Nordic, you can also text to give if you're not carrying cash like most of us don't nowadays. And you can also give online. And those of you on Facebook, I've posted the information, so check on our timeline. Lord Jesus, you who express your kingship, not by taking, but by giving, not by demanding, but by sacrificing, bless us now as we follow your example. And in case that you didn't check in, if you're visiting or haven't been here in a while, make sure that the ushers got their name down for our attendance so we can add you to the attendance. And now we lay down the palm branches, and with them we lay down our belief that there is no other way for you to be God. As the last echo of the final hallelujah fades, so does our hope that this journey can end in any other way. The week stretches ahead, glory less and pain full. Whether we talk with all faith or none, we look towards the cross, though it is both the most human and the most divine of all journeys. Travel the word, word, road, sorry, with courage, with love, and with the uneasy peace that is a gift of faith into the holiest of weeks. Amen. Amen.